Hello everyone, a lot of motorcyclists these days are buying their adventure bikes, planning to go to the mountains, planning to start doing some trail riding and they are often asking us ki how to start building up their motorcycles, how to prioritize their investments and protection, lights, luggage and ergonomics. Well, we are there to help you out with the same. Today, we'll be talking about our Africa Twin, which we have accessorized particularly for adventure touring. Well, ideally, any bike you buy, your first investment should be in your bike's protection. That is to safeguard the bike in case of any fall or save it when you're riding on the road. Well, there are certain instances, even though you might not take a fall, there's no impact on the bike, but riding on the road, some debris, some stones might constantly hit the bike at some sensitive zones, which might hamper your motorcycling ride. So now, starting with this, all adventure bikes like the Tiger 800, the 900s, the 1250s or the Africa Twins, your first investment should be in getting a good set of crash guards so that in case the bike falls, there is no impact on the body panels of the motorcycle. Over here, we've got a tank guard from Hepco Becker and an engine guard that is a lower crash guard from Hepco Becker again, saving the engine fairing in the tank of the motorcycle. Next, what we have is a pair of hand guards. Well, these are called Bark Busters. This is an Australian company and is known to make the best handguards in the market right now. These save the handlebar, these save the lever, they don't end up breaking in case the bike falls and also saves your hand in case of an impact. Now, what next do we have in protection over here is a good radiator guard from Alltrider. Now, when you're trail riding or you're tailgating a four-wheeler or a two-wheeler, there's a high chance that small stones and pebbles might just hit your radiator after the rear spin from the rider in front of you or even when your tire is spinning forward stones from this part might simply hit your radiator or your header pipes. So this part of the bike is always exposed to these stances. Hence, we have got a radiator guard over here and we have got header pipe protection from GB again on this part. Next, what we have is a good tank pad. So basically, when you sit on the motorcycle, there's a very high chance that your belt, your jacket zippers or your keys might start rubbing against the tank of the bike, causing scratches. Apart from this, what we also have is a dash protector. Now, in the Africa Twin, this is the dash protector, the dash is basically touch screen. So when you wear gloves or you're using your hands, there's a high chance that you might affect or tamper the screen of the motorcycle. Hence, a dash protector is recommended. It works like a tempered glass to your phone. Also, when you start doing adventure riding, you need to save your underbelly of the motorcycle from big um, stone, big stones or rocks. Or also when you go up in the hills, you're crossing a river bed, you don't know what's underneath, under the water. Hence, this part of the bike has to be saved. Well, in the Africa Twin, you get a some guard, an aluminum some guard by default, hence we didn't upgrade to one. But yes, when this worn, when this wears out, we'll be needing one for sure. Well, some other protection bits that we've got on the motorcycle is a headlight guard. Just like the radiator guard and the header pipes, I mean, this is an exposed part of the motorcycle to debris and stones and headlights are very, very expensive to replace. Hence, a headlight guard is recommended. Also, what we have is a fork seal protector. This is a USD fork that is an upside down fork. So the barrel goes over the slider. When it, when there's a, the suspension is working, the barrel ends up capturing some dirt and some mud inside, which might tamper the fork seal, break it, and a fork oil starts leaking. Hence, a fork seal protector is recommended. Well, this mostly covers all the protection parts of the bike. Now, the next thing that comes is ergonomics. When we say ergonomics, it means riding comfort. This includes Extended foot packs from SW Motec. These are very handy when you're saddling on the motorcycle or you are riding for a long distance. These give your foot more comfort and also give you good grip. Next, what we have is a set of traction pads from Rubbertech. These serve two purposes. First, they give you good grip on the tank when you're holding it from the knees when you're standing on the motorcycle. Second, they also save your tank from scratches in case you ride wearing a pair of knee guards. Also, some guys might need a set of rocks risers to make the handlebar a little closer towards you and make saddling comfortable. Well, it depends from bike to bike and from rider to rider. In this case, for me, I don't need a pair of handlebar risers. This handlebar suits perfectly well for me. So we've covered traction pads, we've covered extended foot pegs. Next, what we have here is a set of, is a good mobile mount. This is ideally a must have, be it touring or commuting, adventure riding, Sunday rides, whatever it is. Riding in the city, riding through traffic, you need navigation to know the nearest way possible to your destination and how to navigate through. A mobile mount is very, very helpful. What we have here is this connect phone mount. This not only makes your phone mounting seamless, but also saves your phone's camera, especially iPhones from all kind of bike vibrations that might dampen your phone's camera. After the phone mount, what we next have for ergonomics is a side stand extender. Now, whenever you're parking a motorcycle on any uneven surface, be it um, dirt or mud or rocks or pebbles, your stand, the side stand needs to have enough surface area to stand stably or to park itself well. Now, with the stock stands, it's the, the diameter is very, very small, in which case the bike might be parked a little unevenly and causing it to topple over. Hence, this is ideally recommended for most adventure bikes, which are a little tall in height, and they go to uneven places when riding. Well, another must-have for all motorcycles these days are a good set of auxiliary lights. 
with the BS6 compliances coming in, it is a mandate for all bikes to have the headlights on whenever the key is inside, whenever they're in ignition. Now, to ensure that the battery draw remains very limited, their headlight output or the throw has been minimalized. Due to that, when you ride in the evening or at night, the headlight isn't strong enough to give you proper visibility on the road, be it commuting or even touring on the highway. Hence, what we have here are auxiliary lights from Denali and Barracks. These are a combo of both spot and flood. Well, the lights from Barracks are what we use when we are commuting or we are city riding from home to work, work to office or to any cafe, right? Once we hit the highway, you're at a higher speed, the roads are more open and you're more prone to danger. That's when you need better visibility. Hence, what we have here is a set of Denali D7s. These have an output of about 15,000 lumens and give a beam which is both spot and flood, giving you the average amount of visibility. Apart from that, what you also need is a good horn. Riding through traffic or through highway, well, there are, there's a high chance that you'll be neglected or overseen by the trucks or the buses in front of you. Well, to make yourself more known to them, a good horn is always required. Stock horns these days aren't strong enough to give you that awareness or the presence on the road. Now, switching from lights to luggage. Well, on this bike, what we use, since we mostly do adventure riding, we don't do hardcore touring on this. We've got mostly soft luggage options over here. We have a tail bag, which is a very handy one and assist us in carrying our daily essentials or our must haves when we go on a Sunday ride or we go trail riding. We can keep our ORS, power banks, tool kits, first trays, puncher kits, etc. inside of this. When we go touring, what we use are these soft pioneers from Shad. These are 32 litres each side and give you the apt amount of volume. And since they are soft pioneers, they are not heavy. They don't take much space, they aren't bulky and yet solve the purpose. Well, when you're touring or you're going on a highway ride, you can even go for a pair of aluminium pioneers. They look sturdy, they have a good weight capacity, but again, they are heavy and they need the same amount of space every single time. So when you go towards your trails, soft finders are always recommended. Another option that a lot of people go for these days is a good top box. Well, top box is ideally, I'd say, one of the most underrated bike accessories to go for. People think they are delivery wise or they are delivery motorcyclists after putting in a top box, but it's a very, very handy thing. No matter what you ride, you always need some minimum luggage solution with you, which is lockable and safe. A top box sits over here, it's lockable, no one can steal stuff out of it, no one can take off the top box from your bike without a key. And it gives you the app storage to keep your helmet, your office needs, your tiffin boxes, etc. etc. inside of it. And also helps you when you're touring, doubling up as a backrest for the pillion. Well, this mostly covers what you've got around the motorcycle. We also have some plans up next to get done on this, mode, you know, this bike. First would be a red, an air filter. Well, when you do trail riding, you do adventure riding, a lot of dust gets captured and changing the air filter every single time is kind of irritating and takes a lot of time and effort. So what we're planning now is to put an aftermarket air filter from DNA. These are cotton gauge filters, unlike the OEM paper gauge filters. These give you better air, air filtration. They have better air intake and also need less maintenance or less frequent changes. Second, what we'll be needing is a set of double take mirrors over here. When you go on the trails, the bike keeps falling very often. And the more the bike falls, there's a higher chance of these getting bent or broken and adjusting them isn't a very easy task. With a set of double take mirrors, they become very easy to adjust. They are virtually indestructible and also give you a larger field of view. Well, now if you're wondering on how do we start accessorizing, putting all these things together in a bike is going to cost you a lot of money. Rather, what we recommend is that you start prioritizing your investments. The first investment should be in protecting your bike in case of a fall and starting with a basic phone mount. This covers your most city riding or Sunday riding needs. Next, what you can add up over time is a top box or some basic luggage option like a small tail bag. These help you in carrying the stuff across with you tension free. And also add a set of auxiliary lights. So if you tour in the night or even if you're commuting daily, you ride back home in the evening or you leave early in the morning in the ride for your ride, you still need some minimum basic lighting to enhance the road visibility. Once you start adventure riding more and more, make sure your all protection pass for the bike is installed. Starting from a better sum guard, you can go for a chain protector, you can go for a radiator guard. Well, installing all these accessories on a motorcycle in one go is going to cost you a hefty amount of money. We always recommend it's better to put parts, invest money as per your needs. Adventure riding, touring or city commuting will always need a different set of accessories on a motorcycle. We're always there to help you out to recommend the same free free to reach out to us. I hope this video helps. Cheers.